Hi and welcome back. This is session three on budgeting for first-time home buyers or for anybody for that matter. And in the last session, basically, I showed you how to take all of the information that you gathered for the last month and put that into one cash flow calculator to determine what your actual surplus was. And uh, just reviewing the first one that I did in that particular session, the particular couple that I was analyzing had a gross income of 100000 a net after-tax income of 70000 And based on the expenses that they had, they had a surplus of 12460 their housing costs were about 26%. In the next segment of what I showed you in the last video, we took what you had for expenses and then we made a guesstimate on where you were going to be based on what you think you could afford to have come out of your genes. So now we're at the genes factor. And the genes factor is all about what's coming out of my genes every month and how much is going to come out of my genes in the future when I own a home. So in that particular segment, we went through and we plugged into the expense side that that particular couple thought they could increase their rent from $1,000 up to $1,200, resulting in about $14,004. And then we plugged in all the different things that happen to you when you buy a home, like property taxes, repairs, higher costs for insurance, higher costs for utilities, and mortgage life. And that summary ended up showing that you still had a surplus of $2,260 and it showed that your housing costs had gone up from 26% up to 36.8. Now, $2,260 is not a lot of money to have as a surplus at the end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look into that budget and we're going to look at what lifestyle changes you could make in your budget to accommodate a better surplus at the end. And then I'm finally going to show you how a lender views or CMHC or any other insurer views your uh, approval or your comfort level and I'm going to show you why I disagree with what they believe that you should qualify for. Okay, so this next session what we're going to do, I'm going to load another scenario and this one is called the actual mortgage. So we're going to go back to the summary and at the bottom of this one you'll notice that I have zero down here at the end and I'll explain to you that in a minute. On the income side, again, no changes on the income side. Uh, on the expense side, again, we have all the costs we talked about previously. Uh, we had gas costs, repairs, insurance, and we had lease costs. On the expense side, number two, we also left groceries in, the clothing in, household items. Uh, we left the entertainment in at $1,500. Now, we took $100 off the dining and said, maybe you want to cut that back. Uh, you've got the cell phones in there still. Uh, and we took out the life insurance over here for a thousand bucks because we'd actually accounted for that in mortgage life. Over here now what we did was uh, we looked at the loans, we left those in and uh, there's an interesting comment when a, when a lender qualifies you, the lender qualifies you on the basis of your gross income and the maximum allowable for anybody is 32 percent of your gross income for principal interest taxes and heat and 40% of your gross income for principal interest taxes heat and all your outside debt. Well, in the scenario we've just created here, I'll go back to this one. The first, the first ratio is 18.2%. That's for principal interest taxes heat is relative to your gross income. And the second one, when I added in the debt side, it ended up 24%. And that'll become a little more relevant to you as, uh, as we talk further. Um, again, on the RSPs, we left that in. We took out the savings of $1,200 over here. And uh, in the vacation side, we knocked off $2,500 in vacations, saying that maybe when you want to go in the home for the first year, you're going to adjust your budget a little bit. You might be a little more of a homebody. And uh, gifts we left in here at 1000 We left the memberships in. And down here at the bottom, you're going to see surplus 663 a month. So by making a couple of changes in your lifestyle, you've ended up with actually a surplus here of 7960 And why I've got it down on the other expense side, I want to make sure that when you create a scenario for yourself that you have a surplus, an emergency fund sitting here, that you're not going to be wondering every month whether your budget's going to balance. 
this tells me in this particular scenario that you've done a pretty good job of looking at your budget and what you can afford. And in fact, if you need to replace a car, you've got money to do it. You've got monies for savings now if you want to plug savings back in. Any eventuality that comes up, you've got a surplus in your budget. One of the interesting things about budgeting when I do this with a lot of people and I come up with surpluses, a lot of people sit back and say, you know, I don't think I have that surplus because I never see it in my bank account. And again, that's part of the budgeting process because you don't really, if you have it in your bank account, chances are you might spend it. Once you get into budgeting and you figure out where everything's going, you'll find out at the end of the month you have more money. Now here's the interesting part. So at this particular scenario right now, this is a really good genes factor as far as I'm concerned for how this particular couple has looked at where they should qualify and the house they should qualify for. The next scenario or the final scenario that I'm going to do is this is what the CMHC says that you can qualify for. So again, uh, CMHC or any of the insurers dictate to a lender how, the, how a particular person qualifies and they dictate the ratios that somebody can use to learn how they can qualify based on their income and based on their liabilities. And CMHC says the maximum allowable for anybody going into a home the first time is 32% of their gross income for principal interest taxes heat and 40% of your gross income for principal interest taxes heat and all your outside debt. But it completely disregards any budget circumstances. And when you look at what CMHC allows you to do, and I'm going to go back over to this summary, you're going to see here that your housing costs have gone up to 52.5%. And down here, the same scenario we developed is now $3,936 in the hole. So let's go over to the expense side for a minute. And what I plugged into the same formula as before is the principal interest taxes heat at 32%, which says you're allowed to spend up to $2,666 per month. That's $31,000 a year. And you can see the dramatic increase down here in housing costs. We left all of these expenses here on the other side. In the second sheet we went in, we said, okay, so let's say we make an adjustment in our entertainment. We knock $600 off that. We knock dining down from $200 to $100. The cell phones are still in there. The life insurance is still in there. We go over to scenario number three, and instead of having the loans in here for $500, I've plugged in $8,004, which is the maximum allowable that you could have in debt payments under CMHC's formula. I've taken out RSPs, I've taken out savings at $1,200, vacations I've knocked them down to $2,000, gifts I've knocked them down to $500, and I've taken out the gym and the golf membership completely. So even in this scenario now, and we go back, even with all those adjustments, we're down to $3,936 in the hole. So with that type of analysis, this tells me that this particular couple, based on the way a lender through CMHC would qualify them, are going to be in Kraft Dinner Flambe territory. That's going to be the subject of my next video, how lenders qualify you and the things that you should look for and what you should commit out of your income towards housing costs as I see it for you to go into a home and for it to be affordable. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for my next video on Kraft Dinner Flambe Syndrome. I'm Brian Mathy, and this is Mortgage Straight Talk.